hi guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here thank you for stopping by don't forget to like comment and subscribe my name is kimani and today we are going to be reacting to facts about slavery never mentioned in school by famous is it so well i hope i'm not butchering this person's name okay <laughs> so we're going to watch it together i'm going to react and then we discuss it let's go Instrumental use of the history of slavery today also underlies the claim that slavery grew out of racism. For most of its long history, which includes most of the history of the human race, slavery was largely not the enslavement of racially different people, for the simple reason that only in recent centuries has either the technology or the wealth existed to go to another continent to get slaves and transport them en masse across an ocean. People were enslaved because they were vulnerable, not because of how they looked. The peoples of the Balkans were enslaved by fellow Europeans, as well as by the peoples of the Middle East, for at least six centuries before the first African was brought to the Western Hemisphere. I thought that this was already public information. I mean, I don't know how African Americans are taught slavery in America, but in Jamaica, when we're studying Caribbean history, um, I did Caribbean history in high school and I specialized in that, right? When we were taught about slavery, we weren't taught that, okay, black people were the first to be ex enslaved. We, in our Caribbean history books, I'm gonna, one day I'm gonna bring the book, come and show you guys, but in our Caribbean history books, it mentioned that there are different races that were actually tried um, for slavery. I also recall that it mentioned that they tried white people, white people weren't strong enough and they could not endure the sun. And um, they tried other ethnicities and other races. However, they found that the black race was the most hardworking, the most suitable, and they could endure the stress, they could endure the labor, and they were strong enough to carry the load. Hence, they saw that black, enslaving black people was profitable. So I already knew this. <laughs> Before the modern era, Before the mod by and large, Europeans enslaved other Europeans, Asians enslaved other Asians, Africans enslaved other Africans, and the indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere enslaved other indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere. Slavery was not based on race, much less on theories about race. Only ra Yeah, I knew this. Like, um... Before the transatlantic slave trade, there was already slavery, but the definition of slavery back then had a different connotation, right? Persons became slaves because um, of tribal warfare. And so, for example, if you had an African tribe um, in one vicinity and they conquered another African tribe, then those captives were their slaves. And the slavery that they endured, it was nothing harsh. <laughs> And it was nothing to the extreme as how black people endured it. Nobody was, nobody's hands got chopped off. No one's feet got chopped off. There was no butt breaking. There was no um, cutting off of black people's necks. There was no feeding them to alligators. There was none of that. Like, they captured other tribes. They took their wives and their children from the men. They um, allowed these people to work for them. They paid them in food. I don't recall seeing information about paying them in cash but they actually paid them in food and they just kept them in their household like a maid that was the initial idea of slavery back then before the transatlantic slave trade and before the sugar revolution that happened in the caribbean so yeah Relatively late in history, did enslavement across racial lines occur on such a scale as to promote an ideology of racism that outlasted the institution of slavery itself. Wherever a separate people were enslaved, they were disdained or despised, whether they were different by country, religion, caste, race, or tribe. In East Africa, the Maasai were feared slave raiders, and other African tribes, either alone or in conjunction with Arabs, enslaved their more vulnerable neighbors. As late as 1891, it was reported that Manuema slavers had demoralized surrounding tribes, destroying crops, and famine reigned everywhere. Even in the early 20th century, Abyssinians were still raiding other Africans and carrying off slaves. It was 1922 before the British had gained sufficient control in Tanganyika to stamp out slavery there, 
Arabs were the leading slave raiders in East Africa, ranging over an area larger than all of Europe. The total number of slaves exported from East Africa during the 19th century has been estimated to be at least 2 million. And I'm glad that um, the video mentions that Arabs were the lead um, enslavers because not only white people enslaved black people, like um, you had white Hispanic, which would be the Spaniards, you had white British, you had white French, white Portugal, yes, but you also had Arab nations enslaving Africans. So, I'm glad you mentioned this. The form in which the story of slavery has reached most people today has been along the lines of the best-selling book and widely watched television miniseries, Roots, by Alex Haley. Challenged on the historical accuracy of Roots, Haley said, I tried to give my people a myth to live by. This instrumental use of history, or purported history, is open to the same objections as other instrumental myth-making. I also find it funny that most people learned slavery through a movie. Um, I think I watched Roots once, but I don't remember it. I was like really small. And all I remember was My Name is Toby. I hope that's from the right movie. <laughs> I, I hope that's from Roots. But for real though, like in Jamaica, it's totally different. We learn our history. We um, we learn our history and there is no hiding or concealing or misconception to my knowledge, right? Like we understand that, um, we understand the slave trade, we understand why it happened, we understand that hey, slavery didn't begin in Africa, we understand that there was a history before Africa, um, Africans enslavement, we understand all of these things and it's taught in school so like the more i understand african-american history it's like only a portion of information is actually discussed in the school system that's what i'm understanding as it relates to america it's it's really sad because in my mind i'm thinking that you guys don't really understand your history or know your history well enough it's almost as if they're trying to hide it that's that's what i'm interpreting Despite the impression created by Roots, during the era of the massive slave trade from West Africa, a white man was more likely to catch malaria in Africa than to catch slaves himself. The average life expectancy of a white man in the interior of sub-Saharan Africa at that time was less than one year. By and large, men from Europe or the Western Hemisphere came to the coasts of Africa, bought their slaves, and left as soon as possible. Even so, the death rates among the white crews of the ships carrying slaves to the Western Hemisphere were as high as the death rates among the slaves themselves. That's true. Um, back then, they didn't have, like, vaccines. <laughs> so, um, in specific regions of the world, such as Africa or Jamaica and the Caribbean, there's a lot of dengue, yellow fever, malaria, because we have a lot of mosquitoes, right? Because we're surrounded by water. And so when the Europeans came to Africa, they weren't used to malaria. They didn't have the, what do you want to say, antibody. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know the proper terminologies, but they didn't have the proper um, defense mechanisms in their body to fight off such infections and diseases. So majority of the enslavers they didn't really survive <laughs> it was only much later after quinine and other medical measures enabled europeans to survive where there were tropical diseases was it possible for them to invade africa in force and establish empires there but by then the atlantic slave trade had already been ended during the era of that trade, Africa was largely ruled by Africans who established the conditions under which slave sales took place. The crew of a slave ship was in no... I want to go back. What did he just say a while ago? During the era of that trade, Africa was largely ruled by Africans who established the conditions under which slave sales took place. I am so glad that he said this because 
the way how the media lets it seem it lets it seem as if all oh, white people were just coming to africa and just raping up the place and just taking up black people and we had no control and we were so weak like what no th th thank you because in my history books that i learned here in jamaica this is what it says right listen i'm going to shock some people black people were selling other black people into slavery okay that's that's how that's how we we got here in jamaica that's how black americans got to black Amer got to america that's how that's how the, the disbursement of our race happened because not only were villages being raided by white nations yes that is a that is a fact right however a lot of the enslavement of black people it happened because of the betrayal of our own people right so you had you had just like oh watch the movie um the woman king many persons were being upset because they were talking about how oh um the dahoma tribe they're responsible for enslavement yes we know this but that's not really what the movie is about y'all need to watch that movie for real for real do not form an opinion without watching it right it was up of a true and of a fact that tribes in africa the 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 ones that were very powerful caught slaves caught other black people and sold them into slavery but i want to dispel this whole myth that oh we, we we weren't running things in africa hello we were running things is it sad that we sold each other into slavery yes but the white man didn't just come and just conquered africa like that okay we were our own biggest demise as a people back then and still now that's a whole other video but um yeah we 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 betrayed our own we betrayed our own position to defy african rulers and their armies by going out across the land and capturing people willy-nilly the stronger african peoples captured and enslaved the weaker peoples the same pattern found over the centuries in europe asia the western hemisphere and polynesia in the asa land the Ngoni and Yao swaggered over and terrorized other tribes. In Uganda, the Baganda made life miserable for their neighbors. And the Nioro and Hima of Anko enslaved Toro women and children. The Tutsi dominated the Hutu in Rwanda. The Maasai lorded it over the Kikuyu and Kamba. And the latter, in turn, held the Indorobo in a kind of serfdom. It was precisely the fact that Europeans, except for the Portuguese, seldom participated in the raids that captured and enslaved Africans that enabled most people in Europe and the Americas to remain oblivious to the traumatic experience that this was, with some Africans committing suicide to avoid capture and wives being whipped as they tried to cling to their husbands or children. Historian David Brian Davis pointed out that Europeans had little contact with the actual process of enslavement and that as late as 1721... Yeah, that's actually true because I specifically remember in history class, my teacher was saying that um, the reason why they did this, it was a mental tactic because if you put yourself in a situation back then, if you're black, black as what they call it, and you see another black person coming towards you in your mind you're not thinking that okay this is my enemy so they <laughs> they literally did this as a tactic in order to let vulnerable black tribes let their guards down so that they could enslave them and capture them and then sell them off to white europeans into slavery it's, it's sad every time i think about it and i want to cry the Royal African Company asked its agents to investigate the modes of enslavement in the interior. Europeans typically saw only the end results, enslaved people being offered for sale on the coast. It was much the same story in the Ottoman Empire, where those who bought slaves had no idea what these slaves had been through before. The unique position of the Western world in the history and especially the destruction of slavery need not imply that there was unanimity within the West on this institution. 
in addition to whites who defended the enslavement of Africans on racial grounds, or who opposed general emancipation on social grounds. There were many whites, and even blacks, who defended slavery as a matter of self-interest as slave owners. Although most black owners of slaves in the United States were only nominal owners of members of their own families, there were thousands of other blacks in the antebellum South who were commercial slave owners, just like their white counterparts. An estimated one-third of the free persons of color in New Orleans were slave owners, and thousands of these slave owners volunteered to fight for the Confederacy during the Civil War. Black slave owners were even more common in the Caribbean. In short, there were many defenders of slavery in the West, even in the 19th century. And outside the West, slavery was too widely accepted to require defense. No other nation ended slavery in the same way as the United States did, and few ended it after so short a struggle, as history is measured. How and why did slavery end in most of the world? There were two major processes. Over the centuries, as more and more territories around the world consolidated into nation-states with their own armies and navies, raiding those territories to capture and enslave the people who lived within them became more hazardous in itself and also risked military retaliation against the countries from which the raiders came. Thus, more and more peoples became off-limits to slave raiders over time. Put differently, the areas which remained subject to slave raiding over the centuries were primarily those where the people lived in smaller or weaker societies. Such societies continued to exist where it was difficult, for geographic or other reasons, to consolidate large areas under one government. This was true of the Balkans, the backwaters of Asia, and much of sub-Saharan Africa. By the early modern era, sub-Saharan Africa, with its numerous and severe geographic handicaps, was one of the last remaining areas from which vast numbers of people could be enslaved. Okay, guys. Um, so that's all of the video. I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, this is what I have to say. These are my final thoughts. Um, for me personally, is this information new? No, because everything that he had stated in the video, I was already aware of this. As I said before, I am not American, I'm not African American, I am Jamaican, right? That being said, the educational system down here, it's different than in America. And our history is always being taught to us in school. We know where we came from, we know who we are as a people in Jamaica. I guess that's why we're so proud. But, um, for those who are unaware, I guess that would be new information. Mind you, this is the first time I'm I'm actually watching this video. So I guess um, some people, they may, may be like, oh, she watched the video before. No. As I said before, I did history in high school. Down here, we have something called Caribbean Secondary Examination Council, CXC, CSEC. And it's an exam that we have to do um in the states i know that you guys have sats when i was doing my exams in high school i studied caribbean history i was actually a top history student in my class and this is the book this is one of the books that we used in school it's called amerindians to africans right and it explains here it is history for csec examination this book is good because everything that was mentioned in this video was actually mentioned in this book. Remember earlier I was telling you guys that um, slavery didn't begin with just Africans. It, um, you had enslavers who tried other races of people and nobody cut it. <laughs> but us as black people cut it. And that's why they were adamant and using our labor. Um, let me guys read you chapter 11. Chapter 11 on page 113, right? It's called African Slavery. I'm just going to read here a small part just to prove that this information is widely accessible. However, it seems as if there's a disconnect between the actual facts of slavery versus what black Americans are being taught, which I don't understand why. Or maybe I do understand why, but no one wants to say they want to keep you guys down anyways um the labor problem created by the sugar revolution 
the most important result of the sugar revolution for the West Indies, West Africa, and the world was the development of African slavery. The change from tobacco to sugar caused a labor problem. Sugar, civil sugar cultivation and manufacture needed a vast amount of unskilled manual labor, which could not be provided by the existing population of the West Indies because at the time in the Caribbean and in the West Indies, there were Indians. These Indians were known as Tainos, right? So they couldn't provide the labor. The Spaniards had tried to use Indians either as slaves or under the system of, what is this? Encomienda, or I don't know, I'm not Spanish, right? But the Tainos had died quickly under a system of forced labor, so they tried to the sign us. I'm gonna go all the way down here. The English, French, and Dutch did not consider Indian slavery an answer to the problem. By then, the Tainers were almost extinct. And although they they did use Carib slaves, Caribs are like a group of Indians, a tribe of Indians, right? These were chiefly women slaves about the house. For sugar cultivation, large number of laborers capable of carrying out prolonged heavy work were needed. So they needed strong people. The next possibility considered was indentured European laborers. Remember, I had mentioned earlier that they tried white people, but they weren't strong enough for the work, right? The Spanish refused to undertake hard manual labor in the tropics, mostly for reasons of pride, but this did not apply to other Europeans, both French and English indentured slave, both French and English indentured servants came to the West Indies in large number. By the terms of his contract, each had to work for four to five years, right? However, the indentured system could not provide the large permanent labor force needed for the production of sugar. Very few Europeans, however poor, were willing to enter into a contract, right? Many of these white Europeans, they died because of illness and because of ill treatment, right? Here we go. The solution, I want you guys to see that I'm not making this up. Right there, it says the solution to the problem was found in West Africa, which was much nearer to the Caribbean than Europe. In West Africa, men and women who were accustomed to agricultural labor in a tropical climate were available in huge numbers and could be transported cheaply across the Atlantic. Unfortunately, as they showed no interest in migrating, they could be obtained only by using force. Madonna. Get this book. Amerindians to Africans. The reason why we were enslaved is because we, genetically, right? Phenotypically, we were the strongest. Not only that, Africa was in the trop is in the tropics, right? It is in a region with hot climate and where sugar and tobacco can be grown in substantial and vast amount. Sugar cane, rather right can be grown substantially and back then we were farmers we had our own land we cultivated our own crops we didn't have to go to the supermarket to buy and get our crops right so because we had all of this goodness enslavers or people who wanted to build empires but did not have the labor to do so they saw us as a target but and they were like, oh, come and be indentured slavers, come and be workers. And we're like, no, who wants to work for y'all? So they did it by force. And a tactic that they used in order to enslave us was using our own people against us. People who were greedy and people who wanted to achieve wealth by any means necessary. And that has led to the demise of the black race. As I said before, guys, get this book. It is widely available. This, they have, I believe they have three versions of this book. This is the first version. You have a blue one as well, and you have a green one to this, I believe, right? And this is what I used in my studies in high school, and I did well on my CXCs. I got straight A profile. So that's it for today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share if you care. Let the word spread. Okay, let us know 
or past i want you guys to know your past so that you don't make the same mistakes in the future and that you are aware who you are as a people we're more than just slaves we had a history before slavery and we're going to have a future after slavery okay guys so i'll see you all in the next video bye Mwah.